All in. Can't hear you. I know, it's kind of weird. I can't hear you because you're at home. Um, I'm used to hearing you guys scream, so I'll have, to, uh, I'll have to just pretend. Anyway, welcome to school meeting. I'm calling this school meeting because it's not quite like an assembly, and I don't want to sort of tarnish what we do at assemblies um, by pretending this is the same thing. So school meeting, and how do we start assemblies? How do we start school meeting? We start with the pledge, right? I think that's what I normally say. So uh, why don't we do the pledge? You need a flag. Oh, wait. I have an idea. All right. Here we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, you can be seated. All right, so we're just going to do it. This is going to be a pretty short video. Uh, we're going to do a quick read aloud, uh, a book by Jerry Pallotta called Dory Story. Uh, it's one of my favorites. Later on in another school meeting, I'll kind of talk to you about my connection with, uh, with Mr. Pallotta. Uh, hopefully he doesn't mind that I read his book uh, on YouTube. Um, and then a quick story. You guys notice I'm wearing my Alden sweatshirt, but I'm also wearing a tie. I just want to make sure you all recognize me. Um, this is my first day of school tie. I uh, wore this on the first day of school today, or today, this year. And uh, so I thought I'd wear it at its uh, first edition of school meeting. And little known fact about this tie is that this tie was given to me by Mrs. Newton in the office. So um, next time you see Mrs. Newton, which hopefully will be uh, soon, you can tell her that you liked Mr. E's school bus tie. Um, so why don't we go ahead and get into Dory's story now. And uh, yeah, so take it away. All right, everybody, it's Dory's Story by Jerry Pallotta. My mom and dad always told me, you're just a kid, so don't ever go out in the boat alone. But one night, I learned about plankton. These tiny sea creatures are invisible during the day, but sometimes after dark, they light up. I wanted to learn more. The next morning, the ocean was flat calm. I couldn't resist. I pushed the dory out and decided to row to the big rock in the middle of the bay. As I rowed, I noticed dozens of seabirds circling around. Grandpa says that where there are seabirds, there are fish. So I kept rowing. I looked over the side of the boat. I saw hundreds and hundreds of tiny shrimp swimming. I guessed that the little shrimp were eating the plankton. As I rode toward the big rock, I saw schools of sand lances. Some people call these fish sand eels. The sand eels were chasing and eating the shrimp. I heard something splash, and I looked over the bow of the boat. I heard more splashes. I looked closer and saw mackerels chasing and eating the sand eels. Then I saw them, bluefish. Yikes! The bluefish were swimming like crazy and eating the mackerels. It was a feeding frenzy. Bluefish have razor-sharp teeth. I learned that the hard way. Last year, I put my fingers into the mouth of a bluefish to pull my hook out. Zap! I had to get four stitches. I stood up in the dory to watch the show the bluefish were putting on. Suddenly, five huge tuna appeared in the bay. The tuna were chasing and eating the bluefish. I began to worry. Maybe going out in the boat alone wasn't such a good idea. The tuna were almost as long as the boat. I've been scared a few times, but I was terrified when a killer whale came into the bay chasing the tuna. I didn't know what to do. But it all started to make sense. Killer whales eat tuna, tuna eat bluefish, bluefish eat mackerels, mackerels eat sand eels, sand eels eat shrimp, and shrimp eat plankton. I knew one thing, I didn't want to become part of the food chain, 
Help! Where's my mommy? Oh, look at that one. Just as I decided to row back to shore, whammo! A humongous humpback whale breached right in front of me. But wait, humpback whales don't eat killer whales. Humpback eats plan eat plankton and krill, some of the tiniest creatures in the ocean. The food chain is really more like a food web. I should have been smart like the seals and stayed near the shore. The harbor seals had sensed the danger and pulled themselves out of the water to escape the killer whales. All of a sudden, a killer whale swam by, chasing a tuna. The tuna jumped out of the water and smashed into my dory. Bam! Oh no, I was capsized. Thank God I had my life jacket on. I should have stayed with the boat to wait for help, but I was scared and I started swimming. I swam through the shrimp, the eels, the mackerels, the bluefish, the tuna, the killer whales, and the humpback whale. It was cold. I had water in my nose, but I kept swimming towards that rock in the middle of the bay. I made it. I pulled myself up by grabbing onto the seaweed. Just then, I heard my mom's voice. Danny, you tell the best stories when you're in the bathtub. You should write a book. And that, my friends, is the end. All right, hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed Dory Story by Jerry Pallotta. I love that book. Uh, it reminds me of being in Situate, which I'll talk to you about uh, on another school meeting episode. Uh, and hopefully I'll see you back here. All right, have a great day, guys. Bye.